Good morning children and welcome back to English class. The topic for today's video is a lesson in our textbook Lady Candidates Need Not Apply by Sudha Murthy. Let us talk about Sudha Murthy. Sudha Murthy is an Indian engineering teacher, Kannada, Marathi and English author as well as a social worker. She is also the chairperson of the Infosys Foundation. She is the wife of co-founder of Infosys, N. R. Narayan Murthy. Sudha Murthy began her professional career in computer science and engineering. She is well known for the social work and her contribution to literature in Kannada and English. Murthy completed a Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical and Electronic Engineering from BVB College of Engineering and Technology, now known as KLE Technological University. In 1976, how a young lady's postcard to J.R.D. Tata broke a glass ceiling for women by becoming the first female engineer to be hired by Telco. Sudha Murthy broke the glass ceiling and paved the way for many others to follow. It was in Pune that she met Nanayan Murthy, whom she went on to marry. In a way, a postcard that changed destiny. 46 years ago, Telco, now Tata Motors, put up an advertisement at the Indian Institute of Science, Bengaluru, calling for young, bright, hard-working engineers with an excellent academic background for placements. In the ad was a postscript which read, Lady candidates need not apply. Children, let us read what happens when a girl student at IISC was deeply affected by the last line, even though she was not actively looking for the job opportunities. So here's the story. In section one of Sudha Murthy's personal narrative, lady candidates need not apply she tells us about herself, that she was a bright, bold and idealistic girl. She was in the final year of her master's course in computer science at the Indian Institute of Sciences in Bangalore, then known as the Tata Institute. It was probably in April 1974 in Bangalore and it was getting warm and red with gulmohars that were blooming in the IISC campus. She was the only girl in the postgraduate department uh, that, who was staying at the uh, ladies' hostel. She was looking forward to going abroad and complete a doctorate uh, degree in computer science. But she had ne never thought of taking up a job in India. One day, while she was returning to her hostel from the lecture hall complex, she saw an advertisement on the notice board. It was a standard job requirement notice from the famous automobile company Telco, which is now known as Tata Motors. It stated that the company required a young, bright engineer, hardworking with an excellent academic record. At the bottom was a small line that said, lady candidates need not apply. She read it and was very upset. For the first time in her life, she was up against gender discrimination. Though she was not keen on taking up a job, she saw this as a challenge. She had done extremely well in academics, better than most of her male peers. Little did she know then that in real life, academic excellence is not enough to be successful. After reading the notice, she went fuming to her room and decided to inform the topmost person in the telco's management about the injustice the company was perpetrating. She got a postcard and started to write. 
But there was a problem. She did not know who headed Telco. She knew J.R.D. was the head of the Tata Group. She had seen his pictures in the newspaper. Actually, Suman Mulgaonkar was the company's chairperson then. She took the card and addressed it to J.R.D. and started writing. And till date, she remembers what she wrote. In a postcard, she wrote, The great Tatas have always been pioneers. They are the people who started the basic infrastructure industries in India, such as iron and steel, chemicals, textiles, and locomotives. They have cared for higher education in India since 1900, and they were responsible for the establishment of the Indian Institute of Science. Fortunately, she was studying there. But then she wrote, I am surprised how a company such as Telco is discriminating on the basis of gender. She posted that letter and forgot about it. Less than 10, ten days later, she received a telegram stating that she had to appear for an interview at the Telco's Pune facility at the company's expense. She was taken aback by the telegram. Her hostel mates told her um, she used the opportunity to go to Pune free of cost and buy them the famous Pune saris for cheap. She collected 30 rupees each from everyone who wanted a sari. She then looked, she then looked back and felt like laughing at the reasons for going. But back then, they seemed good enough to make the trip. It was her first visit to Pune, and she immediately fell in love with the city. As directed, she went to Telco's Pimpri office for the interview. There were six people on the panel, and she realized then that this was a serious business. This is the girl who wrote to JRD. She heard somebody whisper as soon as she entered the room. By then, she knew for sure that she would not get the job. The realization abolished all fears from her mind. So she was rather cool while the interview was being conducted. So dear students, this is the end of section one. In the next video, we'll read the section two the personal narrative by Sudha Murthy and we'll find out whether she got the job or not and how did she perform. Did she ever meet JRD or not? So wait for the second video. Thank you and bye for now.